one of the most overlooked aspects of our lifestyles is the air we breathe. The same could be said about EMF and Wi-Fi, probably because both are invisible. You know, it's not like your room becomes a black smog cloud when the CO2 levels are high. You know, the same way laser beams don't shoot into your room when a cell tower is nearby. Those exaggerations of what's happening or how the situation should actually be treated. This is not to be confused with carbon monoxide, uh, which is typically from a car or gas stove, and homes do usually have meters testing for that. Carbon dioxide, CO2, is rarely spoken about outside of fear-mongering people to stop eating meat because cows are farting too much. The CO2 is what our bodies emit when we breathe oxygen, but there is a base amount of CO2 naturally occurring in the environment on our planet that can't really be altered by any human means. And there are two main things to talk about here. One is the household CO2 levels, which are a result of keeping the windows and doors closed. And the second is air pollution in general and what can be done to remedy potential problems. Overall, you simply want to crack open a window and be far away from a major city, although there are certainly exceptions to both of these things. One crazy thing to me is that just by simply not opening a window, you can cause so many symptoms that can hamper both your mental and physical well-being. I first found out about this on a podcast I did with Matt, the EMF minimalist, I think almost two years ago now, and I was reminded because you know, the past few weeks I've been sitting in my room on the computer, window closed, and the one day I decided to crack it open, get some fresh air because the room was really hot, I had a sudden burst of energy and that reminded me of the CO2 levels. And since I've kept that window kind of cracked the past few weeks, I've just felt a lot better in general. And by staying in a room for hours and hours and hours at a time with the windows closed, especially in the winter when there's not a lot of air circulation, you know, you're breathing in all that oxygen, you're exhaling CO2, and the CO2 levels in the room are slowly rising over the course of that day. You'll feel drowsy as they get higher and higher. You can start having sleepiness, headaches, poor concentration, loss of attention, even like slight heart palpitations, increased heart rate, even nausea. Anything higher than that, you'll actually start harming yourself with you know, breathing difficulties and severe heart pounding, and that basically indicates that you need fresh air. From our hypothetical past lives, that ancestral perspective, we have to acknowledge that humans spent their entire lives basically outdoors. Even Indians in a teepee or Scandinavian families in log cabins, they weren't really sealed off from the outside as we are now. Even so, there are so many other modern factors that are affecting air quality just in our own household. So here I have just a short list and there's probably a, a bunch of devices uh, that I don't know about. I mean, I was even just printing stuff earlier and I was smelling the ink coming off my printer. You know, I'm driving in my car earlier, inhaling gas and brake fumes. So this is just a general list to get you open-minded and really seeking out potential problems. Any kind of fuel burning device like a gas stove or a fireplace, if someone smokes in the house, even like e-cigarettes, you have various building materials that are finished with certain things, especially furniture. You know, my parents bought a couch some months ago and it came in the house and it was sprayed with, I think, bromide. And I was like, you better open that door because you're inhaling. The whole house smelled like a chemical. A lot of this stuff is horrible. And on top of that, my parents use cleaning products like Lysol and bleach and they'll literally spray it until they're coughing their lungs out. But, you know, I mean, they're so out of it, brainwashed their whole lives, indoctrinated that they don't realize they're literally poisoning themselves with cleaning products. Uh, the new car smell is a great example of you inhaling chemicals. And HVAC systems, if they're not cleaned properly, uh, aren't really doing you any good. They might be heating your house, they might be cooling your house, but it's just dirty air that's constantly getting pushed through your vents. Who knows what type of mold or bacteria or fungus or whatever is growing in the vents in your home. You have to really keep an eye on that type of stuff. It could really be as simple as just keeping that window cracked open. You know, I feel much better the entire day 
with the fresh air as opposed to you know sitting in a cramped up room. The real issue occurs where you're in an environment where the air pollution is so high that opening a window doesn't matter. You know, I'm fortunate enough to not be directly in Manhattan or more polluted parts of New York City. That being said, even just an hour further away from the city from where I am would be a drastic increase in air quality. You know, I don't believe there's an inexpensive way to filter air for the average person. I mean, if possible, you want to obviously move to a less polluted location and then commute to work, but the type of air filtration systems that elite families and billionaires use cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, spraying some essential oil or using a salt lamp isn't going to do squat compared to a school bus sized air filter. And you'd have to have everything completely sealed off, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars invested in a home and the air filtration system to truly clean out any possible negatives. I'm sure there's some, you know, very kind of secretive companies that do that type of stuff because the average person doesn't have access to those funds. So we've gone over practical solutions and most of this stuff is pretty obvious. It's just something that needs to be brought to most people's attention as a real concern. Now, I don't have one of these myself, but you can purchase a carbon dioxide meter and keep it in your room or living space just as a reminder. They aren't exactly cheap, you know, I think around $150 for a decent one, but I think I will end up getting one because even if it only reminds you a few days out of the year to keep that window open, the health benefits far exceed the cost. And the main reason you might actually want to buy that meter is if you are in a polluted city or living situation, so you can see exactly how high the CO2 levels are. If you guys do want a more detailed explanation of what levels are safe, uh, you can sign up for the newsletter at frank-stefano.com and I'll see if I could send you guys an email later outlining like, oh well, you know, below 400 parts per million is typical, you know, 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million to start seeing issues, stuff like that. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, hopefully, you know, every single thing I talk about, whether it's this, Wi-Fi EMF stuff, higher water quality, higher food quality, exercise grounding, all of those things can help you live a happier and healthier life and achieve your own goals and dreams. Uh, so if you guys could please leave a comment down below, uh, drop a like on the video, uh, make sure that notification bell is checked. Uh, so you see my videos typically at 11 a.m. every day. And if you do want to support me further, uh, you can check out frank-stefano.com for everything I have available from Frankie's Syringe Meat to Frankie's Syringe Foods to Wi-Fi Shielding to Frankie's Naturals to Organ Supplements to uh, uh, the one too many businesses I have right now. Hopefully that's it uh, before I go crazy. Uh, but thanks again for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.